Hello everyone, I am finally here again with more Paleo news. I have been super out of time working graveyard shift and going to school and it, it seems like the only time I have time to do any of this is early early in the morning. Like right now it's 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm like, woo! Uh, <laughs> but anyway, here's the news. Uh, oh yeah, quick note. Some of these articles are maybe a couple weeks old, three weeks old, and some are very recent too. So. Uh, it's kind of, I'm just kind of catching up on what's been happening since I've been gone. Uh, anyway, a new dinosaur from Spain was found. It's uh, a type of Carcharodontosaur. It uh, says it has a hunchback because it has a little like triangular shaped fin uh, on its back legs. Um, supposedly there are quill knobs in the forearms of this dinosaur. Uh, kind of like how they found quill knobs in uh, Velociraptor, su suggesting that feathers were on the arms. And they say if these were the only places that had feathers, then the feathers were just used for display. And I think this is a very large, I think the article said about 20 feet long. I don't, I don't, don't remember the whole thing. That's kind of, that's pretty big to have, even, well, just feathers on the arms probably, yeah. But uh, that's, I think it's the biggest dinosaur we found with evidence of feathers. I think, you can correct me on that for sure, but uh, that's what I think. And I don't remember reading that they found the entire skeleton. Uh, I know they found enough to note that there was a fin on its back, but I don't remember them saying they found like the entire backbone, so that makes me wonder, maybe it had more than one fin. Uh, maybe it had three or four of these triangle shaped things going up and down its back. You know, so maybe we also have a Godzilla looking dinosaur, that would be pretty cool. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, uh, they haven't found anything like that and it, it probably didn't have that, but that'd be cool if it did. Two more Ceratops stands have has also been found, and I don't know if anybody is uh, keeping track, but uh, that has been a lot of Ceratops stands found this year. That is a whole bunch, <laughs> and I wonder how many more can be discovered before next year. Um, uh, they were discovered on that continent uh, that split, well the continent split, but the sea that split North America, uh, they were on that continent which I cannot remember the name of, it starts with an L. Uh, but it was uh, to the, the left part, the skinnier continent. And uh, these two dinosaurs are found. They're named Utah Ceratops and Cosmo Ceratops. Utah Ceratops uh, is the larger of the two. Uh, I believe this city is about 20 feet long. And uh, with a huge skull. I do not remember the size of the skull. I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, but it, it's in there somewhere. And Cosmoceratops is getting a lot of a lot more attention here than one for it. It's got these weird horns on its frill. It's weird frilly horns, uh, kind of make it look like a weird slick forward hairdo style. Uh, and they said uh, there probably are a lot more Ceratopsians and dino just dinosaurs alone that live on this continent, which is like less than a third, less than a third the size of Africa. And they say there were more dinosaurs on this continent than there are big mammals on Africa today. So that is pretty interesting. And uh, moving on. A giant bird uh, was found in Chile named Pelagornis. It is a seabird that uh, has a wingspan of about 17 feet. And uh, they say these kind of birds, well not this particular species, but seabirds are found on all continent, continents all over the world. Uh, but this one is much more complete. It's 70% complete. And uh, they say the reason why that this one's more, well, the reason why they don't usually survive is because, you know, birds are, have very fragile bones and they don't uh, fossilize as well. Uh, they said that uh, this bird had the largest, the most safe, safely largest wingspan, if that makes sense. I guess the largest wing, wingspan possible, uh, safely possible for a bird. Um, they had uh, sort of like teeth. Uh, they call them pseudo teeth, so I guess they're not actually teeth, but uh, I guess uh, something like teeth, maybe pro projection of the bone and the beak. I don't know. Uh, they use that to catch either fish or squid from the ocean, much like uh, they believe pterosaurs do. And uh, that is pretty much it on this on this article. It's in the description with all the others, and it's uh, pretty cool. A fossilized penguin was found in uh, Peru that stood about five feet tall and they actually have a good idea of what uh, color uh, this penguin was. His name was 
Uh, I think it's pronounced Inkyaku, Inkyahaku, or something like that. They lived in the late Eocene pe period, about 36 million years ago. And they say the penguin's feathers were a reddish brown, and they know that uh, from the, what's the word? Melonsomes? Melonsomes? Uh, uh, something to do with fine color. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. Uh, the the feathers uh, in this penguin were so compact and stacked on top of each other, and the wing the wing feathers uh, made the whole flipper uh, more narrow. And uh, they say that this makes it makes it look like that this uh, bird had scales. I guess is where I keep seeing articles that this is a scaly penguin, but I don't see no evidence of scales. I don't know. I, I think it's how the feathers are compacted on each other like that. Uh, he was found by a student named Ali Altamarino. God, I hope I pronounced that right. And that is pretty much the article. Uh, they named the uh, fossil Pedro. And uh, there is much more to read along with uh, this week's paleo clip. And many, many more extra links I will put as soon as I find them. Thank you for uh, watching this news video. Hopefully I'll get more on schedule with these like I said in the beginning. But until then, have a groovy day or several days or months, you know, depending on how long I get back. <laughs>